In this video, I'm going to give you 10 amazing tips that will change completely the way you're modeling plasticity and save you a ton of time. Let's go. So very quickly before we start, if you're really serious about learning 3D and you want to learn it as quickly as possible, then I highly recommend you join our Academy 2.0 program. Now, Academy 2.0 contains a whole curriculum of courses and assets and add-ons that will help you to get from the beginner stage to intermediate to advanced very quickly and efficiently. We also offer a private community on Discord and a weekly Q&A calls when you can ask us questions directly and get instant feedback. This is a very effective and fast way of learning 3D, so check it out. The the link is in the video description. Tip number one, how to add alpha stamps to your model, just like decals in Blender or alpha stamps in, in ZBrush. So I prepared a, a very simple boolean here, you can see. What we're gonna do now is press three for faces, select the face, shift, control, and plus the numpad to expand the selection. And we're gonna press alt D to snatch the mold of this uh, of this imprint, okay? And then of this uh, boolean. We're gonna press GG and uh, snap it in here. Now we're gonna rotate it on X axis, so RX and minus 90, right? And we're going to scale this a little bit, okay? Move it somewhere here, right? And then we wanna sync it in. So press G, V to switch the pivot point. Select the pivot point in here, press Z. Hold control and snap it to the surface. Select this one, shift select this one, and press Q. Now what you also can do, press T to uh, kind of keep this cutter, right? And you can repeat it in the other place. So grab that, GG, move it somewhere here. Scale this, right? Move it here and repeat the process. Select this one, shift select this one, Q and approve. And this is a very quick way of detailing. As additional tip, what I can tell you is that what you can do is you can create multiple um, elements like that. You can actually move them off center to the right side here on the x axis so they don't overlap with your model and save it as an empty plasticity file with all these inserts. And then you can drag and drop it into your plasticity file when you're working on the model and simply drag and drop them onto your model very easily. Tip number two how to simplify your topology. Well, sometimes when you're modeling, right, you're going to have these rogue edges or rogue faces on your mesh, and they might actually interfere with fillets, with creating more details, with moving faces. So what you can do to remove them is select the face and press X, and it will actually dissolve this face and merge it into the existing face. If it's not possible, it means that this edge is required to carry the curvature of the topology, and you need to look for a different solution. Tip number three, how to remove bevels with one click. Sometimes when you're modeling and you have a lot of construction bevels, which means the bevels that actually contribute to the shape, and you want to move something, you know, you're going to have glitches and stuff like this happening, right? So what you want to do, you want to remove the bevels before you do anything like this. And if you wanted to remove it manually, you're going to have to, you know, click the bevel, press X, click another bevel, press X, it's, it's just a lot of work. So you can do this uh, basically on mask. Click on the mesh, right, and then go here and remove fillets from shell click on that it's gonna actually highlight all the fillets right click and you're good to go tip number four how to match face to another face in plasticity now there's a really quick way of doing this so let me just add a cube here i'm gonna drop a cube in here somewhere okay and let's say i wanted to match this face right to this curvature so let me move this one in here okay and all I need to do is press three for faces, select the face, start moving it in any direction, and then click on the face I want to match to, and boom, you're done. Tip number five, how to precisely draw with curve using snapping lines. So let's say I wanted to create more details on this gun, and I wanted to reuse some angles of existing edges in order to create echo details. So let's just press shift A for a curve, right? And we're going to start somewhere here, okay? So I'm going to draw in here, and then... I want to go down, but I want to go down on a specific angle that's the same as angle of this edge. All you need to do is hover over this edge that you want to copy, tap shift once, and you're going to see these construction lines, right? So use that. And then let's say I wanted to go back here and create a point on the same height uh, as this one. No problem. Just tap this point. Then uh, you will see that all these lines are going to cross. Click here and then click here and you're good to go. And that's how you create very cohesive design language on your models. Tip number six, how to overcome issues with zoom tool in plasticity. Now, very often when you want to loft something or patch something, you're gonna have fragmented edges on your mesh. And if you're not gonna select all of these, patching or lofting will not work because plasticity cannot find all the edges needed for the operation to complete. 
So let's say I wanted to zoom in on, on this element here, and you see that I'm zooming, 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 and eventually I'm going to not only slow down with the zooming tool, it's just getting slower and slower, but I'm going to also clip through the mesh. So the way to fix that is simply switch to orthographic view, which will allow you to zoom in much closer. And second tip is that you can hold control, hold middle mouse button and move your mouse up and down to zoom really quickly. Okay. Tip number seven and possibly the most powerful tip I'm going to give you today is bridging edges. It will allow you to create tangency and continuity between different surfaces in 3D space. And this is a bread and butter of surfacing in plasticity. So let's say that I wanted to I wanted to create a continuity bet between this edge and this edge in space. This would be very difficult to do manually, uh, especially when you want to create tangency and you need tangency, for example, for lofts to work. Okay, it needs to be a mathematically a clean connection for the lofts to work. Sometimes the lack of tangency is gonna break it. So let's select this edge and this edge, right? And you want to, you know, kind of combine them uh, together. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to bridge, click here and click here. And now you'll see this menu. The first section at the top will tell you where to position the end point and start point. So let's say I'm going to move this one to the beginning and you see at zero, it actually snapped to the end of this edge, which means all both verts are overlapping. That's very important because Occasionally, again, lofting and passing will fail when the verts are not matching, okay, not meeting in the same point. It's the same here, you can actually choose where you want it. Let's say you wanted to bring it to the end as well. So we want to bridge these two points together. Then you can also change direction, which will basically uh, change direction of, um, of the connection. So now let's talk about tangency. You have G0, which basically is the shortest uh, uh, route between them. Then you got G1, which is tangency. Then you got the G2, which is going to be even more smooth and G3 is going to be super smooth. So as long as you are G1 and above, you are tangent on both edges, which means there's a continuity here in a curvature between these two edges. And then you have tension. So let's say you wanted to go with G1, but the tension is a little bit too much, okay? So you want to decrease it. So you can still decrease the tension on this and make it a little bit more flat. Then lastly, you got the trim option, which is fantastic, but I'm going to show it to you on a separate example. So let's say that I wanted to create a line here uh, in space. Let's just draw a line here and I'm going to move it okay, on X axis here. And I wanted to combine this one with this one. So now let me show you how it works. We're going to select this curve here, right? click here, click here, and now you can see that this edge starts disappearing. And it starts disappearing because we have auto trim turned on. If I turn it off, I'm going to have two edges. If I turn it on, I'm going to basically replace the guide edge with the new curve, which is brilliant. And of course, you can use the same tools here to create tangency, you know, to select whatever G point you want. And then you can also adjust the starting point, right? So let's say when I go to the beginning, and here you can also decide how far we want to actually slide. You can see that how far you want to slide this edge on this guide edge, right? So that's what you want to go to the beginning. So let's say we want to go to the beginning and we're going to trim this. And there you go. You got perfect tangency on this spot and it just transitions onto the X axis. So that's how you do it. This is a very powerful tool for um, creating surfacing and plasticity. There are, of course, many more of them, but this is, uh, this is something that's going to get you out of a lot of problematic situations, allow you to work faster and easier, more intuitively. Tip number eight, do not add micro fillets before you export your mesh to, for example, Blender or other software, because it's just going to cause you a lot of problems. So let me explain you what are micro fillets. So you can see on my mesh, we have fillets like these, which are slightly smaller, or these, which are lar uh, quite large. And we have also chamfers here, right? But you notice that this chamfer, for example, doesn't have a fillet on it. So this edge, right? This edge is not being filleted. There's no micro fillet on it. These tiny bevels that you add, you know, for example, in Blender with hard ups or whatever. Don't do that because when you do that, you're going to be uh, shooting yourself in the foot because if you want to come back to plasticity and fix something, add some details, you will have to remove them. And sometimes it's very difficult to do, okay? So honestly, don't add micro fillets. You can do it in Blender. For example, if I bridge this to Blender, so let's bring this gun to Blender, I'll show you. Let's bring it to Blender and we're gonna use a bridge for plasticity, which you can, by the way, get on GitHub, it's free. So we're gonna connect it and I'm gonna actually create a separate video for, uh, for plasticity a bridge, so don't worry. I'm gonna explain how, you know, all these functions, how, it, how to use it, how to optimize it, etc. But you see that here, 
on this edge we don't have any fillet really i have cavity but if i turn the cavity off you'll see that this edge doesn't have any bevel so what i can do now go to you know rendered view and i can actually add mat using for example material works which is our add-on the link is in the video description by the way and uh, i can just add a mat here let's say this coated titanium and now if i wanted to let's add something different let's say a graphite steel would be better and if i wanted to add a fillet here i simply click on the bevel right and i'm done and all I need to do is change samples, okay, and maybe change the, you know, the fillet width, right, to something a bit uh, less crazy, maybe like a 0, 0.5, there you go, and you got this tiny bevel running, and then, you know, if you copy that mod to other elements, you will have it all over the place, and you don't have to really worry about it. So, don't do that, don't add micro fillets, because again, if you want to go to plasticity, let's say, and change something here, uh, you'll have to remove all of them, and honestly, sometimes it's a headache. Tip number nine, how to scale a face of a cut. Now, I didn't think it was possible in plasticity on square cuts, uh, because on, on circular cuts it's quite easy, but on square cuts you need to enable a kind of a hidden feature or hidden move in plasticity, and I'll show you how to do it. It was driving me crazy, and finally cracked it with the guys uh, from Academy. So uh, let me let me show you how it works. Um, so if I want to scale this face down, pressing S will do basically fuck all. You can't do it. So what you need to do is click on this face and go to this draft um, face option. Click on this face, and then you can hold Shift and uh, to slow it down and scale the one in the middle. But if you want to do the same thing here you got a problem because you have four faces to deal with, right? So what you need to do is select this face, then go to draft, then select one of the faces, which basically will fill out, you know, all these options. But then you click on one of these options to uncheck it, hold shift to select all other faces, right? And then you can actually scale the one in the middle. And tip number 10, reloading plasticity. Now, sometimes when you work in plasticity, things gonna go, you know, slow and you're gonna get some glitches. You wanna reload the interface. It's very easy to do that without closing plasticity. Simply hold shift and control and press R and plasticity gonna reload the scene and refresh it. Freestyling. Freestyling in plasticity is a tool that allows you to actually determine the movement of scaling, rotating, um, extruding, anything really on a specific axis or a specific direction. So let's say that I have this face here. I wanted to, you know, um, let's just uh, offset it with O. And I wanted to extrude it, but I wanna, don't want to extrude it on the normal like this, right? I want to extrude it actually horizontally here. So the way you do this, right, you simply go to E for extrude, okay? And then you see that you have here a menu, and you can uh, see that there's an F for F style. So press F for F style, and then simply click and drag it on the axis or you know, line that you want to drag it on. And remember this tip I gave you previously on creating cohesive angles? I want to watch this. Let's say that I wanted to drag it on the same angle as this line. So what I can do is create a line here, top shift, right? Create an angle here like this. Then I'm going to grab this face here, right? So again, grab the face. We're going to offset it. We're going to select it, right? Then we're going to go to extrude. Okay, I'm going to press F for freestyle and we can actually draw it on this line. So you can combine these tools together to create some really powerful workflows. And that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Like I said in the beginning, if you're interested in learning 3D and you're serious about it, take a look at our Academy 2.0 program. The link is in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.